I don't like people. I know, you're all absolutely shocked. But if I'm being honest, I love you lads and ladies. But if I had to hang out with you for more than a day, I'd probably spend the better part of that time wishing to flate a blunderbuss. I'm really not a people person. People are just the worst. I'm more of an animal person. Or more specifically, a dog person. Yeah, that's where you'll find tough old Ducky's soft spot. I love dogs. Big, small, happy, and grumpy. Aww. He looks how I feel. But that's not to say dogs are great all the time. Haven't had many dogs over the years, I can tell you it's not all fantastic. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So grab your leash and strap on, strap in, and let me tell you about all the things I hate about dogs. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. To say my dogs are oddballs is a bit of an understatement. Snoop, my 13 year old female Staffordshire Bull Terrier, turns into a fucking psychopath when she's on her back. And Max, my 7 year old Pitbull, can't sleep unless he's touching someone. In most cases that someone is Snoop. But there's one thing they do that completely baffles me, and this happens at least once a week. I give them their food bowls filled with food, they'll sniff it and walk away. This is unusual in and of itself, because most days they're only short of eating the fucking doors in the house. But on these days that they've decided they're not hungry, I can reach down into the bowl, take out a handful of nuts they've just snubbed, and guess what happens? Yep, yeah, once they're in my hand, they'll eat it. It's madness. Now, I've tried to explain to them at length that it's the same food, but they just can't seem to grasp the concept. So these days now I have to feed these entitled shits once a week like some sort of Cleopatra royalty. Lay down. Good dog. Hey, ducky. What's the crack, lad? Ah, fuck all, man. Did you get a dog? Yeah, sure did. I'm well trained too. Watch this. Max, lay down. Lay down. <laughs> Give him a second. Max, lay down. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> The odd occasion I let the dogs up into the room for the night so they can sleep in a bed like a human. I say odd occasion because I don't allow it all the time because dogs are a pain in the hole to sleep with. If it's not Snoop crying to get out of the room at 5 o'clock in the morning just so she can walk out into the hall to do a U-turn to come right back in, it's Max constantly changing to one of 17 different positions that all seem to involve having his genitals resting on my face. But that's not the worst of it. The worst part is... The farts. You truly haven't experienced hell until you've been hotboxed by a dog. A dog's fart has to be the most foul smelling thing on earth, and bedtime is where they truly give it hell. I mean it makes your eyes water, and 9 times out of 10, their arse is aimed with pinpoint accuracy directly at your open mouth. You feel the warmth of it brush against your face. You can taste it before you can smell it. But it's not all bad. Sometimes after a day of dodgy eating, you can launch a counterattack, and I can tell you there's nothing funnier than counterfarting a dog so bad that they tried to leave. You want the ball? Yeah, yeah, give me the ball, give me the ball. Do you want the ball? Yeah, yeah, I want the ball, I want the ball. Okay then, go get it. They say dog is man's best friend, but that's definitely not true. Because somebody who can hold eye contact with you while they shit on your kitchen floor is not someone you'd call a friend. Especially Max. Sure, Max has a few redeeming qualities. He loves people, he makes a funny noise when he yawns. <laughs> What are you saying? Do you always have to fucking interrupt him? Shut the fuck! And he hates fidget spinners, so you know he's not a complete bollocks. But no matter how strict I am with him, the bastard won't stop pissing against things in my house. Now he knows he shouldn't be doing this, because he won't do it when I'm in the same room. But as soon as I walk out of that room, eh, fuck him. Now I know it's a male dog behaviour called Merkin, and people keep insisting that I get him neutered because it'll stop it. But Fuck me, that's a bit extreme. Yeah, it is annoying, but I'm not gonna cut off the chap's balls. What the fuck is wrong with these people? That's the kind of punishment you give a misbehaving priest, not a misbehaving dog. Hmm. The law of conservation of mass, or the principle of mass conservation, states that for any system closed to all transfers of matter and energy, the mass of that system must remain constant over time, as system's mass cannot change. So quantity cannot be added or removed, hence the quantity of mass is conserved over time. Okay. Then explain why my dog sheds more hair than they actually got on their body. Seriously, it's a complete scientific anomaly. My dog can shed more hair in a brief period of being petted than they've got on their entire bodies. And somehow they're not bald. You know the way you always see those half-naked Africans in those TV commercials about charities and whatnot? I've got a solution. All I need to do is send Snoop and Max over there for a couple of days and they could clothe half the fucking country with dog hair jackets. Or fuck it, do one better. Throw them over there for a couple of weeks, they could carpet the entire fucking continent. 
nothing quite as nice as a shower after a long day. It's nice to just wash away that sticky feeling of spending 8 hours doing something you have to, not something you want to. But there's nothing quite as infuriating as trying to wash a dog after a long day. They lose their goddamn minds at the sight of water. They react like you're trying to kill them. I genuinely have to carry my dogs into the bathroom and they'll reach out and cling to the door frame like a scene from Taken. And it makes no sense. They avoid lukewarm water like it's feckin' lava. But if that bat water was filled with cold watery shit, I'd bet they'd be in there faster than a post-orgasm moment of clarity. I didn't quite know how to end this video. I had planned on doing a comedy skit throughout the video that ended on a really depressing note at the end, but as I worked on it, it was just a bit too jarring and just all in all a bit too cheap. But not having this topic in this video is not right, because we all know what the worst thing is about owning dogs. It's just we try not to think about it. So rather than trying to be funny or cheap, I'll just talk straight. The single worst thing about owning a dog is, they die. You spend years of your life bonding with these absolute nutcases and then one day they'll just up and die on you. And as a dog owner, that's the one thing you fear most, is the day you have to say goodbye to the furry bastard. As much as you hate the thought of them dying, you know it's inevitable. Fight it as you might, but with the average life expectancy of a dog, it's very likely you'll outlive them. And the only thing you really fear more is not being there with them when that moment comes. You don't want them to die alone in the house when you're at work just to be found hours later. You don't want them to die unexpectedly through an accident that you have no control over. And most of all, you don't want them dying wondering where you were. If it has to happen, and unfortunately it does, as shit of a situation as it is, you want to be there for them. You want to be there so they can die exactly how they lived. By your side.